Alright, there's some changes to Meatbot that you should know about. First off, once you reach to 1500 points, you will unlock double teams and you will need to set up your defensive formation. The rule for defensive formation is that if you are the one defending, your team 1 wins, then the second team will not initiate into the battle. But if your team 1 loses, your team 2 will then go to battle. If you, Whether you win or you lose, it will deduct your points based on that, right? So if you are the defending uh, team, one win is all you need on the first team. So you want to make your first team really strong while your second team um, second strong. Since I use a bunch of tank teams with Iki, this time around I'm going to showcase him try and try to use more speed comps. Um, they gave him a pretty good set, very good set actually. Uh, Warhammer, a lot of attack but a little bit crit, low crit damage but it's fine. Um, and on Avatara as well, no speed, very good. That's what you want right? Him to have zero speed. And a lot of HP as well, 32,000 HP, 34,000 HP. Alright, I'm going to try this team with a speed lead but I'm still going to use Mavis because Mavis is one of his best friend and I'm running Jinchu so I'm going to take the first turn and I'm going to bait all of the counter attacks that way I can do some damage with Iki right if this one loses I'm not going to run the speed team anymore okay nice we win we won both teams let's go and he did 450,000 damage what in the hell if you are running him in a speed team he's only contribution is when the enemy counter attacks um, because he doesn't really do damage outside of his turn, right? So all of these counters are very good for me because he's gonna do his uh, passive. It, it triggers once per turn. There we go, Ana is already dead. Look at that. Look at how, how, how fast Ana dies. Just like that. And she keeps on taking damage. And yeah. 145,000 damage. That's very good. What the hell? He's going to remove that stun, reduce the max HP cap. Yeah, since they can't kill off my Mavis because of R2 Jinchu, he can't really do anything against my, my Iki. Nice. There we go. It doesn't matter if they take a turn or whatnot, because every time they take a turn, they'll take uh, damage from his passive. That's what I want, right? And that's the reason why you, you kind of don't want to run him in his uh, speed team, because if you run him in a speed team, he's not really going to do much for you. You want the enemies to take the turn instead of him. There we go. 8 stacks again. And they should just die from the damage that they take. Yep. Simple. And then also with this new system, it's easier for you to get more points if you have two really good teams. So if your team 1 wins, that's going to give you points. And then if your second team, that's also going to give you more points. So with this battle alone, I think I received like 50 uh, points because my team 1 and team 2 won, right? So if you have all of these stack characters, um, you're gonna be ranking up very, very fast. Okay, you know what? Since I cannot outspeed him, I'm gonna run him back into the tank team, and then my second team can outspeed him if I run my speed team over here. Now, I should be able to just uh, snipe this guy. My first team, let's see if uh, it can do well. I'm running Clara because again, Nice, we got 60 points just from that. I'm running Clara here because I want uh, Tolan to go for her instead of my Mavis. Because the whole point of Mavis is to let my entire team not die, right? If she is the fastest in the team, then it's not gonna work. Tolan can counter him or counter this team pretty well in point war, not in knockout or in beat bout. Because in knockout and beat bout, you cannot manual the fight. So it's not gonna work out too well for you, right? There we go, my Mavis got the shield and then it's going to be very very difficult for him to kill me. She's also going to keep on healing as well because the Intimidate buff also gives me lifesteal. Okay, we end up dying here. We end up dying and we still won because he has that uh, buff that makes him unkillable. So now he's going to have that buff uh, that en Envious Moon in perpetuity uh, until the Graveless buff on him goes away, right? But it's not really going to go away that fast because he's built extremely slow. Zero speed. Like I said, zero speed Iki plus Mavis is so cancerous, man. You cannot really do anything against him. And if you have any hint of AP control, you're pretty much dead at that point. 
And yeah, this team just wins because I outspeed. Since I cannot outspeed him, uh, I'm gonna try to just out tank him. But this time, this enemy has a bunch of heals and we still win. There we go, 300, 360,000 damage. Yeah, Clara putting in work, basically doing nothing, just being fast, that's it. You don't need Clara in this team, you can run anything else, but I run Clara in this team because she's not, if there is no Tolan in the enemy team, she's doing something for the team, right? She's AP pushing and she is also provide, uh, providing the immunity uh, buff for me. And then also I have her at R4, so she's gonna give me more defense if my allies have a uh, shield buff. Okay, we still end up dying, so that didn't matter. And my AK is still not in the graveless state, so we just ended up one-shotting them, regardless. Yeah, Iki solo. Iki soloed him. <laughs> Look, Iki's gonna die right here, but because I haven't casted my S3 yet, he's going to. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, never mind. He he just one-shots everyone. <laughs> he doesn't even die. He just one-shots everyone, just like that. And then my second team. Um, because I have an Ana, he doesn't, I just win. I'm just gonna farm like the highest points and we'll see how it goes. Because I, I want to see how high I can get with the free tickets. Okay, this time he has a Gaius. But the problem is, he has TA. So if TA keeps on reducing my AP, he's not really gonna do anything to me, right? He's gonna keep on taking uh, damage from Iki's passive. And then he's probably gonna die from that. I'm gonna run Daji in this team. Uh, just to make sure I kill off that Mavis. Now, can I still win? The first team has an AoE attack, we lost. Yeah, AoE attacks is gonna be his uh, main downfall that we go 53,000 because that uh, Gaius just ends up one-shotting my Iki um, and he didn't really do much from that point on, right? If he gets one-shotted and he doesn't have that envious moon buff, he is pretty much a sitting duck at that point. And since this team has a buff strip, that being uh, Gaius, it's really easy for him to deal with my two turns of invincibility when my Iki dies. Or, yeah, my Iki doesn't even get to, to live. He just gets one-shotted by Gaius. Because uh, my Mavis ends up dying at the same time. So yeah, there we go. Uh, AoE attacks will counter him pretty hard. Once again, I cannot outspeed his first team, so I'm gonna have to use this team again. He doesn't have that strong of an AoE attacks, uh, being just JJ and Feng Shun. So I don't think he can kill off my Iki that quickly. Oh, okay, we still lose. All right, ninety-five thousand. He still ends up killing my Iki. Okay, Iki is defense broken, and I think he's gonna get one-shotted by Zhang Juli right here. Yeah, you can still kill him off um, with AOE attacks as long as you can kill Mavis off uh, at the same time. So if Mavis dies and he doesn't get that get that graveless buff. Um, he will just die within the next AoE attack, right? So right here, Ana is just going to trickle down my team. And then if he gets lucky with Zhang Juli, and yeah, there we go. He just dies. So he got lucky with Zhang Juli's uh, single target being a 25% uh, chance for him to target me, and he got it. Okay, this team doesn't have an AoE attacks, so I should be just fine, and I should just uh, roll him with my first team. There we go. No AoE abilities, it's pretty much fodder for, for this guy. He can just pretty much solo the entire team if you pair him up with Mavis because if if he ends up dying and going into the graveless state and he ends up being the last one alive, he will be immortal while also doing 50% of his damage every time an enemy attacks, right? Because he's not gonna consume his sleep no more buff because he, 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 he cannot die. So right here, I think my Mavis still ends up dying but it doesn't matter because he probably went into that graveless state. Let's see here. Can his genie kill me? He kills me. But, okay, yeah, but he, he doesn't have any AoE attacks. So he's not gonna kill off my Iki. I still have four characters that can tank the damage before he loses his stealth buff. And all of these are pretty hard to kill as well. JJ has a second life. Uh, Jin Chu has that shield intimidate buff. So it's very hard to kill. We still have JJ and Clara to tank. There we go. Still has that stealth buff. It's really difficult for you to, to deal with him if you don't have an AoE attack. So this guy has an AoE attack with Farah. We'll see how that goes. Um, 
we'll, we'll use the same team because again i cannot outspeed him so i will still need to use the same team there we go we won not that much points uh this time around only 40 35 but we can still b win with both teams pretty much every time because everyone is going to try to run their first team as the strongest team and when their first team is the strongest team i can just run ana in the second team and win that way removes all the buffs he does not one shot my Iki because I think his Farah is level 0 because what the hell was that damage? 12 stacks, Ana is gonna get nuked right now boom 100 to 0, there we go okay we died this time but let's see, do I, do I still have the S3? I still have the S3 so I regain the Envious Moon yeah <laughs> okay this team is going to control my team like crazy but he is going to cleanse all of those controls and just do his thing, right? He cannot be petrified by Tricky, but he will still lose his attack buff when he gets to uh, 8 stacks. We'll see how this goes. That took a while, but we still win. 41 points, 27 points for the first team. Yeah, you can't really control him because he will just cleanse it. It's just too good. His passive is just way overpowered. And by running Clara here, I patch the weakness of this team and that is Mavis being the fastest and they just can't do anything although in beatbout and knockout your Mavis is not running the shield set or the adamantine set so she cannot get the intimidate buff on the first turn so she's really weak on the first turn until she gets her first turn to provide the crit rate buff to Jinchu right whereas in point war you can run her with the adamantine set and get that uh, intimidate effect at the start of battle because you're giving the adamantine buff to Jinchu. So you can still counter this team by killing Mavis off pretty easily. But once she gets the turn to gain that intimidate buff, you're kind of out of luck. Yeah, team 2 with Liam and Ana, I can just kill off Mavis pretty easily. I'm just going to show you this real quick. And then with defense break from R2 Ethan, uh, my Ana will just finish off that... Uh, Mavis in turn 1. Sorry about that, I got a phone, phone call just now. But yeah, I think I was talking about Ana one-shotting Mavis with Liam. And also, Ana versus Ana, we should not have the block effect anymore. I don't know why it's still up. Maybe something didn't go through. Yeah, the, the block effect should be removed in this update right now. But it's still up. Um, it's a good thing that it's still up because uh, the block effect only benefits like high resonance, high divinate Ana. Whereas previously, you can still solo Ana versus Ana while your Ana have uh, less divinate and less resonance if you start off with more shields. Because everyone, uh, both Ana is going to do minimum damage, right? You're only going to be doing uh, the second portion of her attack. But if you're not blocking any more attacks, the Ana with the highest stats will gain the benefit. Okay, now this team, I'm gonna again run the same team, but he has a lot of AoE attacks being Feng Shun, uh, Ethan to defense down me, and then Dornar is just going to one-shot my entire team. We'll see if this team can still work. He doesn't have any strong healer. Feng Shun can only heal if he, do, uh, he, if he does damage, right? But if my units are in the grave state, he cannot heal. Uh, again, I'm gonna run the same second team as well. Let's see if we still win. Nice, we still win. Even with a very strong AoE DPS being Donar, we just don't care about it. Because, okay, so here, here's the thing, right? If you can kill him off within the same time as you kill off Mavis, so that he doesn't go into that graveless state, then you're fine so far from the testing. But if you kill him first before you kill Mavis at the same time, and he is allowed to go into that graveless state, you're done for. So right now, I think that Mavis or that Donar is going to put my Iki into the Gradeless state. Probably. Let's see. Come on. Donar, put my Iki into the Gradeless state. He doesn't. He doesn't even kill anyone. <laughs> he doesn't even kill the Mavis. Mavis had 0 HP. That's the power of our R2 Jinchu man. And since my Iki is allowed to go to that uh, Gradeless state, he's done for. He's going to keep taking uh, damage from my passive. There we go. 
even in the gravely state they are still taking 8k 9k 10k 13k on ana because of his passive that's why he's so bro uh, broken and busted right 12 stacks ana is gonna get one shot right here nope because we killed off uh tolan and tolan put the debuff on us we're still fine i think i still have the graveless and i have sleep no more buff and yeah the only one left is ana and tolan once he gets his turn and casts the S1, he's Ana is dead. Never mind. Ana just dies before he gets to S1. Alright, last ticket. Let me just showcase him against another Iki. And again, for, uh, speed versus tank comp. And he has also an Ana in the team. We'll see how this goes. I think we're gonna lose. No, we win! Because tank comp is just better for him. Uh, 130,000, 150,000 Jung Julie. Yeah, tank comp is just going to be better for him. But keep in mind, again, uh, Without Mavis, he's not really going to do this, right? And if the enemy has any AoE attacks, then if you don't have a Mavis, he's just going to get one shot. In my next video, I might just try him with uh, Cecilia, just to see how bad he is with the Cecilia. Because so far, it's just theory, theory crafting, right? In, high, in higher level PvP, people don't really run AoE DPS that much, except for a few, maybe like Donar or R2CJ. But... In lower term, in lower PvP, where I tested in the PTR server, a lot of people are still running guys. Um, you know, all of this AOE DPS, so he can be a little bit counted there. But in higher tier PvP, we'll see just how well he does, even without Mavis in the team. With my Iki being slower than his Iki, I gain f uh, stacks faster than him, so I reduce his uh, stuff faster, and I will do my nuke faster than him. There we go. My my JJ just ends up uh, one shotting him because he doesn't have a Mavis in the team and that's a problem and yeah that's about it for the beatbox showcase next showcase I'm gonna try him in PvE spoiler alert he's not gonna be good in PvE at all but I'm just gonna showcase it uh, nonetheless yeah I have been running him in my defense comp and so far only three people have attacked me I think this guy let's see here I think this guy attacked me as well oh never mind this is before I put in um, my teams these three attacks are all after I put my Iki, and all three I end up winning the second team like I said you once your team one already wins the second team doesn't go to battle right so doesn't matter if my second team performs as long as my first team performs and since this guy is running a speed cleave comp he doesn't really have that many heals in his team and you know all my damage are going to be permanent on him JJ just dies from his uh passive damage that passive damage man <laughs> i keep uh mentioning it but it's it's what makes him super busted right it's not his nuke that he does on uh, the 12 stacks the the nuke is you rarely ever see it in battle because it's so slow to stack up to 12 stacks before the enemy dies right the enemy dies so fast from his passive already you don't need the 12 stacks to to do the nuke yeah even with like mavis in the enemy team and two aoe dps being emma and Farah, it's still not enough for him to really do anything against this team. Again, this team, single target heavy on the first team, so he's not really going to do anything to my Iki. And since he doesn't have a JJ that can uh, RNG his way through by targeting my Iki when he has the stealth buff, he can't really do anything to target my or to hurt my Iki at this point. The only way that he can do damage to my Iki is when uh, Feng Shun does his AoE attacks from his Pursuit and from his uh, S2 but it's not enough as if you don't run a uh, Daji with Feng Shun it's not enough damage for you to, to kill off uh, Iki yeah his Feng Shun is just dead from one hit of my JJ and yeah the JJ is also putting in work because again that 100% strip from his uh, 4 stacks is so synergistic with JJ's irresistible stun from his divinate and uh yeah i think that's about it for the point war and beat bar showcase i'm gonna see how he does in knockout as well yeah he's a monster man if you want to summon for him right now even when i'm not done with the showcase i think it's safe to say that your shimmer records are gonna be put to good use he is a a monster of a PV pvp unit and it's very hard to power creep him because his value is not the damage that he brings uh, part of it is this 50 percent of his attack right this is also overpowered but part of his uh value that is a massive value as well is his AoE buff strip that cannot be resisted and 
AP reduction and his max HP cap reduction. This is why it's so overpowered right here, lunatic buff right here. Reducing all of the enemy's max HP by 50% after you cast the second time is just so overpowered. It makes all of your units hit like 50% harder. Um, it's easier to kill off all of those tanky comps and his divinate as well. Even if I don't have his uh, D3, he's doing really well. That disease debuff is so good at countering our 6 Lian comps. But yeah, that's about it. Ciao.